Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we have another episode brought to you guys by Blade Ops. Be sure to look them up for all of your knife and EBC needs. And today, as you can see on the table, as you saw in the thumbnail, we're taking a look at another Hogue knife, American made. And of course, this is, as most Hogues do, uh, rather impressive to me. There's not been many Hogues that don't impress me, so I like that. So of course, obviously, you know, I wanna get more on the channel. Um, and this is one that I've been wanting to get my hands on for quite a while, because in terms of what type of knife this is, this is by far the most impressive Hogue I've ever handled. Um, and this is the Hogue Counter-Strike. Now, before I go any further into this review, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now, let's take a look at some overall specs on this knife right here. We have an overall length of 8.35 inches, a blade length coming in at 3.35 inches, and a blade thickness of 130 thousandths. Blade material on this guy, very nice and premium. CPM 20 CV with a Tonto style blade. And of course, there are some other options that they'll all be linked below to check out and see just what they have out there. Uh, we have a flat grind on the blade with a handle length coming in at five inches, a handle thickness at 450 thousandths, and a handle material of G10 on the show side and aluminum on the clip side. Locking mechanism is, of course, that uh, regular slider, typical OTF-style design. Uh, user of a right or left hand tip-up carry. Very nice reversible element to this guy. Uh, weight at a very reasonable 2.9 ounces for a rather long knife. Uh, love seeing that. And a price, which again is a pretty good price for an American-made knife using CPM 20 CV, we're looking at a price of $278.96. So that's pretty much in the ballpark for an American made OTF, you know, with CPM. They're, it's not the cheapest, but it's by no means the most expensive. It's, in my opinion, a pretty reasonable price for this knife. Let's take a look at some size comparisons and compare it to some other OTFs. And uh, it, I was a little surprised when I did this. I actually did some size comparisons before the video because I wanted to not be surprised in front of everyone as I was doing it myself. Uh, let's start off with a couple, a little on the shorter side. Here's your Guardian Tactical 035. And uh, this one here is, this is actually going to be the only non-American made knife you'll see on the video today. Um, this is the, I believe, yeah, the SOS Knives uh, OTF Automatic. This is also available at Blade Ops. I believe it's the only other retailer you can get them at right now. It's the only one I've seen them at. Um, and this actually, for 100 bucks has the best action and still... One of the best actions on an OTF knife I've ever handled for $100. It is Chinese made. Keep in mind, if some of you guys don't like buying Chinese knives, you got to know that. Um, but in terms of an action quality fit and finish, it is phenomenal. And it is still available. So I'll, I'll throw that link down there for you guys as well to check those out. Multiple different blade shapes of that. But as you can see, the Counter-Strike is considerably longer than the, than the SOS and also considerably longer than the Guardian Tactical Recon. 035. Uh, the actuator. Still buttery smooth on the 035. You, you gotta love that actuator. Um, and a better comparison in length would be these guys right here. More, more American made beauty. The Microtech Duroc Delta. And this is, of course, a special, very expensive edition that I kind of impulse bought. But I'm not regretting it because I do love the Duroc Delta. Uh, with some desert camo Cerakote. And this here is your Axial Shift, which of course is another awesome American-made OTF. And it really probably measures up if you're not counting that ridiculous glass breaker, which we'll talk more about that because that doesn't have to stay there if you don't want it to. Um, lines up very well with the Axial Shift and obviously not quite as long as the Duroc Delta. So there's your size comparisons. Whenever I'm reviewing an OTF knife, it's one of the funnest videos to review because I get to deploy a bunch of OTFs and you all know that Deploying OTFs is just fun. It really is. And I don't care if that sounds childish. I can be childish. It's my channel and I'll be childish if I want to. But now let's get back to talking about this knife. Let's start with the blade. Um, it is a really nice looking Tonto. As with most OTFs, you're going to have a slightly thicker behind the edge. This one is no exception coming in at 24,000, which actually is pretty average for most OTFs. 
Um, still holds up really well, still has a good Hogue edge. And of course, with that CPM 20 CV, you will have some good edge retention. So really do like that a whole lot. And I do like, this is still gonna be a rather strong blade. You have a nice robust tip up here. And also in terms of the play, there's, there is, I definitely, I don't want to say there's no play because there is definitely play. I, I can feel the play, but there is definitely less play in this blade than any of the other OTFs you've seen on this video. This by far has the least amount, and I really like that. I think we all look for that. The only one that pretty much has no play is the the the, the Hawk Deadlock, which is like a thousand plus dollars. And yeah, a lot of us are not in the market for a knife like that. So if you want an American-made knife with very little blade play, this is an excellent option. Um, and you just, you know, you're getting that superior fit and finish with Hope like you do pretty much all the time. And you also see that in the handle. I really like the handle on this guy. Um, this, I, I believe it's like Jamascus G10. Um, I really like how the milling pattern works with the colors and kind of just the little lines and swirls you get there. It's a really good texture in terms of feel and hand, and it also just looks really good and, of course, kind of matches the aluminum side. So really like what they did there in terms of aesthetics and texture and just feel overall with this handle. It's very good. Um, it's also a rather slim and slender handle, probably the most slim and slender handle um, I've ever handled for an OTF, and that's including my um, Heretic big OTF. I actually don't have that one on me right now. Um, but even slender than that or thinner than that, it just it has a very, um, I want to say a casual. It almost feels like a, like a Sharpie in your hand. Obviously not quite as thick, um, but just doesn't quite feel like your typical OTF. Definitely a thinner feel in hand, which I think some people will really like. And just really a thinner, more slender appearance in general, which I also really like. Um, I really like the clip on this. I think this clip is fantastic. Um, it doesn't look too aggressive. It's true deep carry, and it feels great in the hand. You don't have too much of a ramp there poking you in the palm or on up here by just below your fingers. So really like everything about this clip. And one of the coolest parts about this knife is... Hogue just finally, to the best of my knowledge, they're the first ones to do this. I'm sure they may not be the only ones, but I don't know about every single OTF company in the world and how they do this. But this glass breaker here, um, it's first of all, it's not as pointy as you think. I mean, obviously you can feel a little point there, but it's not something that's gonna like poke you and draw blood. It's not a <laughs> DNA extractor, um, but it is definitely a glass breaker. Um, just enough kind of chamfering on the point up there to not be too aggressive in terms of what if it was to poke your skin. But it, to me, for this knife, I, I do think it's like a bit of an eyesore. I just don't like the way it looks. It's just me. Uh, if you want to stay more on the tactical side, you can, of course, keep that on there. But if you don't want this on there, they actually send you a replacement part to screw down on it. So instead of having, yeah, and you would have to unscrew the whole thing, the, the tip and, of course, the base here that the tip comes out of, but then, let's pull this out here and give you a better visual so the light's not glaring off this bag here. But I really like what they did here. It's a, it's a very cost-effective solution that's good. I think, make the knife look pretty darn good. Um, it just is going to come down and basically go right there to kind of give you a, a better visual of what that would look like. Um, I really like what they did there. It's going to bring the screw down. The screw will not be recessed. The screw will still be above the base of the clip. But it'll be lower than the actual lanyard hole part of the clip, which I also really don't like. I I can't stand that they do that. They're not the only ones that do it. Microtech does it, and I'm sure some other companies do it. I just, I got no use for that. I, I would be half tempted to just grind that off if I kept this knife. Um, but anyway, you got a nice replacement there that I think is a great idea and is going to make a lot of people happy. And I really think could convince some people to just pull the trigger um, and buy this knife for this simple benefit right there. So very good job on that, Hogue. Thank you for doing that. I wish everyone else would kind of take note of that. Um, but yeah, in terms of the handle, it is great. And I just really like this version in general. I love this Jamascus. I like the back of the handle, like the milling, like everything about it. Next up, the action. Like I said, I already kind of talked about the blade play or very, very minimal blade play that you usually see more of in an OTF. So it's awesome that it has very few minimal blade play. And the only thing about the action that I really don't have a problem with it, but the action is, it's a rather strong actuator on this. Uh, it's not too strong, 
but you got to be like, so the way I'm holding this, like obviously I'm kind of like bending my hand backward to give you guys a view. And that makes it a little difficult for me to kick this blade out. Now, if I just have it in my hand, it's very easy for me to deploy. Like I don't really have an issue just deploying it in my hand for me to use. Um, but when I'm trying to show it off on a camera and bend my wrist in a certain way, I lose a little bit of kind of leverage and strength in my thumb. So I have to try a little harder to retract and deploy the blade. But I do think it's manageable. It's not something I would complain about if I was actually just carrying this and using it in my day to day. Um, the actual force that this blade fires out with is ridiculous. Listen, if you just listen, you can kind of hear that extra harsh, like smacking thwack, especially on the clothes. It, it rockets in just as hard as it rockets out. Um, I really do like the action on this knife. Wish the actuator was a little easier to actuate. If, if this had an actuator like the Guardian Tactical 035, look out. It could very well be the best OTF on the market. But it doesn't. So where does it stack up with all the other OTFs you saw? To be honest, I really can't rank them right now. Um, but I do think for the money and for what this knife brings to the table, I do honestly think it's probably just as bit as good, if not better, than every knife you saw. I'm not saying it's better than every one, but I have no reason to say it's not as good as the other ones. The only one that actually gives it any competition, really, or any real serious competition for not for being better than this, is <laughs> really this SOG just because, or SOS knives, is because it is very easy, very fidgety, very enjoyable, and it's only a hundred bucks compared to 276. But again, Chinese made, so you do pay for the American made quality and American made labor that goes into a knife like this. But at the end of the day, very competitive knife, excellent fin finish, great action, great blade. I really do like this. I think it's one definitely worth considering. And like I said, there's more blade shape options. I'll have as many as I can link below, guys. But let me know what you think of this. It is one I'd recommend. I really do like it. It, it, it continues to uh, fall in line with what I expect from Hope. Very impressed with it. Very happy to get it on the table. And really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope you also have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.